My poor copy of Bellies has absolutely gone through the ringer. When I first got it, I noticed some random stains on it, and then I started reading it in a cafe and I got coffee on it, and then I tried to wipe those stains away with a wet cloth and made it all warped and wrinkly. Like, I'm not that precious about my books, but I do like to keep them presentable. I think it's too late for this one. Anyway, Bellies is the debut novel by transgender author Nicola Dinan. She was born in Hong Kong, grew up in Malaysia, and now lives in London. And one of her two protagonists in this book is also a Malaysian British person. This is a love story of sorts, but it's also a kind of inversion of the love story. It's more generally a story of relationships, of individuals, and how the notion of the individual and the relationship coexist. How we grow and evolve over time as individuals, how our personalities change, how our circumstances change, and how that affects our relationships. And also how our relationships grow and change, and how that affects us as individuals. It's a book about the relationship between people and relationships. It's also a book that's very, very much led by its emotions. This is a book that really feels a lot, and it asks us to feel a lot as well. Bellies is set in the modern day, primarily in London, and it follows two protagonists. We move between their perspectives as the novel progresses, and because they're both written in the first person, you have to be careful whose mind you're currently in when you start a new chapter. So you need to pay attention to context clues to figure out whose perspective we're currently looking through. These two protagonists are Tom and Ming. And before I start talking about them in earnest, I just want to clarify here that Ming is a transgender woman, but she doesn't know that about herself at the very beginning of the novel. And so just as the blurb does, just as the author herself does, I'm going to be switching my pronouns a little bit for Ming between he and she. I am doing that to align with the narrative of the book, not for any cheekily or grossly transphobic reasons. As a trans person myself, I can do what I want. <laughs> so when the novel begins, Tom and Ming are university students. They meet at a party where everyone's in drag. Tom has only just recently come out of the closet. He was dating a girl, and he and this girl both realize that they were gay, she starts a relationship with a woman, and he meets Ming. Ming dreams of becoming a playwright. He and a friend of his have been writing plays together, and they hope that that's what their life will be. Tom and Ming hit it off really, really well at the beginning. Their relationship grows and flourishes, they fall in love, and before you know it, university is over. They've been together for about two years at this point. What's next? Tom's parents live, I can't remember where, St Albans maybe? Like a suburb of London, somewhere close to London, or just within London. I think it's St Albans. Anyway, Tom and Ming move in with Tom's parents while they try and figure out what their lives are going to be. And not long after they finish university, Ming starts doing things and behaving in ways that kind of upset Tom. The first thing he does is start shaving his legs. And then he turns to Tom and says that he wants to get laser hair removal on his face. And so he does. And Tom turns to Ming and says, like, I want a boyfriend, not a girlfriend. And it's more or less at this moment when Ming comes out and says, I think I'm trans. I think I want to live my life as a woman. She talks about how she wanted to go from boy to woman, not boy to man, something along those lines. And that kind of resonated with me a little bit. That's kind of the end of the first act. And from this point, it's difficult to know when to stop talking about the events of the book because I don't want to spoil things. But I think I can say this. Once Ming comes out and decides to start transitioning, for a while at least, this is the story of how these two cope with that within their relationship. And this is a story that's been going on for a long time. There are subreddits about it, people tweet about it, people make YouTube videos about it. This conversation about what to do if you have a certain sexual orientation and your partner comes out as trans. At the beginning of this novel, you have a gay couple. But now that Ming has decided to transition, she is now a straight woman. Can a straight woman and a gay man be in a relationship? This is something that I thought about when I came out. I am primarily attracted to women. Coming out as a trans woman effectively means coming out as a lesbian. And I had so many internal crises over and over again about lesbians finding me attractive and wanting to be with me in a physical way. This book is about that, at least in part. And it's heart-wrenching, at least for a fellow trans woman or for any trans person, to see themselves in this situation. It's a topic that gets talked about a lot, but 
quite often by people who aren't trans. Quite often this is a conversation for the partners of trans people, or for members of the queer community who are not trans, hypothetically discussing it. Cis gay men and cis lesbians talk about this. I've been there, I've seen it happen, and it's interesting how this conversation often happens from a cis perspective rather than a trans one, and so it's nice for a trans author to talk about this situation. What happens when someone comes out as a trans woman who is in a relationship with a gay man? Now, as I said very cleverly, this story is told from both perspectives, Tom and Ming. And that means that you're seeing their relationship from both sides, but you're also seeing their independent lives. Ming has her own shit going on, as does Tom. They have friends that they can turn to, family they can visit, etc, etc. And so you get constantly what they think of the other from within the relationship and from outside of it. And that's great. This is a trans author making it clear what the trans experience is like in a situation like this, but also what the cis experience is like and that's really valuable, and I really have to respect and credit her for doing that. Cis people so often talk about us like we're not here, like we're a problem, and they don't give us a voice. And here you've got a trans author being respectful and dynamic and clever enough to still give the cis person in the relationship a voice as much as the trans person. Great, good, love it. And here I want to talk about how much I related to Ming, and not just in a trans way but it was even deeper and broader than that. When Ming is at university and presenting as a gay man, she has this very specific form of OCD, as well as an anxiety disorder. She goes to her GP and she is prescribed an anti-anxiety medication, and the book very specifically says that it's citalopram, which is the medication that I've been on periodically over the past few years. And it's the first time in a book I've ever heard anyone talk specifically about citalopram, because quite often you've got antidepressants, etc., mentioned in American books and they use American brand names like Zoloft, and Xanax, always Xanax. So I just liked that. I felt understood by that in that moment, because that's the medication I've taken, that's the experience I've had. And then there was this really specific thing, where Ming has hypochondria, health anxiety, illness anxiety, whatever you want to call it. She starts to panic and worry that she has ALS, and in my worst moments with health anxiety, I've worried about certain cancers. Panic checking my body for lumps and all sorts of things. And anxiety is a monstrous thing, that will create these kind of fake symptoms where you can believe that it's true. And it's really scary, and Ming goes through all of that, and I was like, wow, this is very, very relatable. And then it got even more specific, where Ming has this heart thing. She describes it as though her heart misses a beat, and then the following beat that comes is like extra hard. She describes it as a gavel a judge's gavel hitting the wood. And I've had that in the past, these heart palpitations, and it came from anxiety. And it stopped when my anxiety got way better. I don't think about it anymore. And it would usually happen when I noticed it. If I stopped to think about my heart and listen to my heartbeat, it would happen. And that's exactly what happens to Ming. Then she transitions. And her health anxiety doesn't vanish, but it becomes manageable. It becomes something she can control and understand, and she stops being afraid of it. She stops fearing for her health and just living and just enjoying life. She's still racked with anxiety about all sorts of things. She still worries about things. She's still in crisis a lot of the time, but everything becomes more manageable and more grounded and more real. The things that she's afraid of are real things rather than imagined, made up, hypothetical things. And again, I related to that so, so strongly. Just the idea that you've got a trans person who doesn't know they're trans, who is struggling with all of these anxiety issues, health anxiety, hypochondria, panic attacks, OCD, and then she realizes she's trans, she comes out, and it's not a magic fix, but it puts the world into perspective. Things become clearer, things become manageable, because suddenly she understands herself better, she's more comfortable in her skin. Our mental health cannot be cured overnight just by coming out as trans, that's ludicrous. But understanding the truth about yourself makes things more manageable and understandable, and makes it so that you can face things head on, because you get yourself now. You don't feel like a stranger in your own body, in your own mind. I have felt all of that, and Ming feels all of that in the book, and I've never related to a character so strongly in all my life, and I'm really grateful for that. And then there's Tom. I would say, in terms of the number of pages dedicated to each of these two protagonists, Tom probably gets more chapters and pages, 
I would say. The love and dedication that Nicola Dinan has for Tom is absolutely beautiful. So much sympathy, so much kindness, so much focus paid to him. I really felt for his plight. I really felt for everything he went through. He shows respect to Ming as a trans person, but also has to think about himself and his relationships. And as I said at the beginning, this is a book about how we personally grow and change, how our relationships grow and change, and how those two things coincide. Tom and Ming's relationship is a fraught one for so many reasons, not just the trans stuff. And you really get into the heads and the hearts of these two characters. There are of course many other characters and they go to different places as well. Their lives are very fleshed out, but they are constantly each other's focus, no matter what happens. So much happens in this book that amounts to betrayal and backstabbing, pain and heartache. And then there's this constant, almost irritating love that just persists. But love takes so many different forms and the book explores those forms really, really beautifully. It's also a really funny book in places, especially early on. There is some great humor in here. I think this is a book that really blends and balances heartache and humor, and that's difficult to do. But Nicola Dinner knows what she's doing. I have so much respect for this book. I'm so impressed by the feeling of it, by the emotions of it, by the amount of love and heartache that goes on in here. It's a romance, but it's also very much not. It's a love story insofar as it's a story about love. I guess that's the better way to phrase it. It's not a love story, but it is a story about love. I like that. Bellies is gorgeous. It's a celebration of transness. It's a celebration of queer love, but it's also an honest look at how difficult love and relationships and sex and friendships can all be. Wow. Just a whole lot of wow. I'm so impressed by this. The only negative I have is that after the halfway point, it really slows down for a bit until it amps up towards the end again. There's kind of a lull where I feel like perhaps a few chapters could have actually been removed to tighten up the tone and the pacing a little bit. And it's good for things to slow down sometimes, but there was one or two chapters here where I actually felt like they were just wasted space. Nothing was achieved because this is a book all about growth. These people are growing and changing and discovering themselves and getting angry and understanding things and educating themselves, blah, 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 constantly. And just one or two chapters, nothing happens at all. And just a lull in that consistent growth felt strange to me. Like they were intervals that didn't need to be there. So the book is like 20, 30 pages too long, which isn't much. There's just a little moment in the book where things just stop. And I get that that's how life works, but this is fiction. It doesn't have to follow the rules of life. That's my one little nitpick. There's just some empty space there that felt weird. I was running through this book and then I was suddenly floating for a second and then I was back on my feet running again. I didn't like that floaty bit. Aside from that, this is one of the best books I've read this year so far. An incredible debut novel, a very important book when it comes to trans and queer relationships. Beautiful stuff. Not a love story, but a story about love. Subscribe for books.